We're going to start with John, John Brakey and Lynn Bernstein and um, uh, Richard, uh, uh, Dan Wolf and um, several others on the importance of uh, uh, some of the critical issues we're facing with uh, election protection. Uh, John and others uh, to uh, introduce John Brakey. He has been absolutely critical to the use of, of, of ballot scanning, uh, digital imaging, and also the protection of the ballot. Lynn Bernstein has been in uh, some serious situations in New North Carolina and is a stalwart of the election protection movement. We also have with us uh, Dan Wolf, um, who is working on uh, digital uh, um, programming on protecting our right to vote. Uh, Ray Lutz is with us as well. And Emily Levy was with us before. You may have, I'm not sure she's still with us. I do want to very briefly and quickly, oh, you're back with us, Emily. Good to see you. Uh, our, it's important that we celebrate our victories. And our, we won a, a victory yesterday. The people of the world, arguably as important as the midterms uh, in the United States, which is the presidency of Brazil. Uh, Lula was reelected after a horrendous four year uh, uh, um, hiatus in hell with this horrible uh, Bolsonaro, who has yet to concede, by the way. And I will point out that our very own Steve Bannon is urging Bolsonaro not to concede and to start a civil war in Brazil uh, to not allow Lula, the great progressive, to uh, take power. And uh, there are some strikes on the, on behalf of some truckers and so on. By and large, uh, reading the initial reports, um, like many conservatives in the United States who have rejected the Trump uh, stop the steal fascist rubric, many of the conservatives in Brazil are also saying that Lula uh, uh, was the rightful winner, which is absolutely critical. And if you look at the numbers, by the way, it's hair raising. Lula won by less than 2% of the vote in Brazil uh, with the entire Amazon at stake there and the really the future of the human race. I have rarely envisioned through the media or any other way a more loathsome creature than Bolsonaro. What a horrific uh, a human being he is. And, and let's thank God, I believe based on initial reports that he will not be able to stage a coup in Brazil. We can keep our fingers crossed on that. And just remember that Steve Bannon, headed hopefully to prison soon, is advocating a violent overthrow, uh, or apparently it's uh, equivalent in, in Brazil. But let's celebrate uh, the victory of Lula. It is incredibly important. Uh, it could be, could not be more. I also want to mention that Greg Palast, our good buddy who's been on calls, is really, uh, many calls with us, is releasing a film and it's available online now. It's called Vigilante. It's about the uh, horrific voter suppression in Georgia. <laughs> there, he, there he is uh, walking up the street, uh, davening and wearing his, his yarmulke. Um, and uh, uh, Greg, there you go. So you can go to this website, which Steve has so brilliantly put up here and see at least right now for free, Vigilante, I started watching it. It's pretty amazing. Greg is a fabulous filmmaker, and um, I, I strongly um, suggest taking a look at it. I also want to mention one issue before we go to John Brakey. Um, you know, uh, uh, Biden has been very slow to appoint uh, judges, and you know, uh, Trump took no, um, you know, left no stone unturned and appointed more than two hundred fifty judges at uh, Biden, and and this this is a, one of the un mentioned um, um, critical pieces of importance about the control of the Senate. You know, it's the Senate that confirms judges and God forbid the judges, the, ju the Senate uh, be lost. We will not get any more judges to fill these vacancies for the next at least two years. And uh, as we've seen with the Supreme Court and some other of these Trump appointments, you know, it's critically important. Okay, um, let's go now. We are continuing with our 116th uh, Greek Greek call. We have the great John Brakey with us, followed by Lynn Bernstein and Dan Wolf, and then Ray Lutz, if he, uh, Emily Levy, and then uh, Ray Lutz, if he's still with us. Uh, John Brakey, do you want to give us an intro? John is the hero of the Ninja 
tournament in um, in Arizona where they attempted to overthrow the uh, clear victory in in the Arizona election in 2020, and he's now hard at work on 2022. So, John, if you give us a five minute wrap um, uh, or three or four or five, uh, that will be great. And then we'll go to Lynn. Thank you so much. Thank you, Harvey. Well, we are eight days until election day. Above me on a screen is a QR code that will take folks to a short video that is an eye opener. What is transparency? We characterize transparency by visibility and accessibility of information to verify elections and digital ballot images are now the standard. Transparency is the ability of interesting parties to see what's going on and build trust, which is the foundation of any relationship. The more trust we have, the better our democracy functions. We at Audit have learned from our 18 years of work that the problems with elections are complicated, but the solutions are simple. It's called transparency with redundancy and verification. And as a very little of that is going on in this election. My video is titled, The Fight for Election Transparency and How to Take a Cast Vote Record, CVR, Analyze It, and Then Convert the CVR into a Ballot Image Audit Database by importing the ballot images, which is easily sorted into precincts to verify that the election results are correct. In this video, you will also learn how to use Microsoft Excel app called Power Pivot. It is an amazing tool for analyzing election results in the CVR in real time. Audit's mission is to do everything we can to let the public and candidates in red and blue know that these ballot images exist and that they can be used as impunity busters to protect against the possibility of an election type hack. We believe a sophisticated hacker will only steal if he knows that the election results are, sorry about that. That's the, that's the CIA calling. And John, it's very quick. It's important that people understand what you're advocating and have advocated brilliantly in the last few years is that there be digital scanning of hand counted paper ballots. So that this, Absolutely. Argument, this argument that uh, it takes too long to hand to count hand count hand mark ballots, if we digitally scan them, we can get virtually instantaneous results and have a backup for verifying the actual vote count. And that's what you that's do right. in, in Arizona. It is a critical turning point. And interestingly, we had uh, 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 Judith Whitmer from the, the chair of the Democratic Party in Nevada. They are fighting a, a hand marked paper ballots in Nye County, Nevada. We don't want them to fight hand counted paper ballots. We want them to have them digitally scanned. And this is amazing. That's exactly the case, Harvey. American that is exactly American. the case. Go ahead, John, please. So anyway, this means that the ballot images need to be destroyed or made impossible to get. The original handmarked paper ballot in many states are not separated into precincts because they come in through vote by mail or a voting center. Basically, in many states, precincts have gone virtual and ballots are stored by batch and by voting centers. Ballot images can be easily accessed and sorted into precincts for auditing. In Michigan, ballot images are being destroyed because the Secretary of State's office believes that the saving ballot images could cause long lines. In Massachusetts, they're destroying ballot images because they say they're illegal to make. So they say they turned it off when in fact it doesn't work unless it's on. In North Carolina, they're only saving the write-in images, which is maybe only 1% of all the ballot images made. Teaching people how to take a cast vault record database and turn it into a ballot image audit system, simply and fast, is a way to check to see if the count is correct. Audits USA attorney, co-founder Bill Reiser and I constantly have to remind people our, in our Arizona constitution that voting is a secret process of casting a ballot. After voting that same ballot has been voted, there is no secrecy in counting votes on ballots. Ballots are anonymous and are deposited unsigned in boxes along with all other anonymous ballots. 
by getting public records such as ballot images makes the outcome of the election easily understood. We at Audit believe and teach that elections must be transparent, trackable, publicly verified for our democracy to thrive. Finally, I fear that Democrats have taken such a strong position against the big lie that on election night that many may concede because if they don't, they'll look like a sore loser. And when in fact, a, these candidates have a responsibility to their voters to verify that their election was real by requesting the cast vote record database with the ballot images. Yes, transparency is the solution and without it, our democracy will die in darkness. Thank you for giving me the time, Harvey, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you again. That's fantastic. People have to understand that John Brakey is the great pioneer on this and what we're advocating. We've been advocating since 2004, actually, in Ohio, where we witnessed Bob Petrakis and I up close and personal the theft of a presidential election. We want all ballots to be hand-marked paper ballots, which is what made the difference in 2020. If there weren't hand-marked paper ballots in 2020, if the whole election had been done on computers, Donald Trump would now be president for life. I guarantee you, hand-counted, hand-marked paper ballots saved the 2020 election. And that was after 16 years of work from 2004. But the missing link is what John has pointed out, is that the hand marked paper ballots that can come in by mail or person, however they come in, need to be digitally scanned. And once they're digitally scanned, we have a backup, we have an instant vote count, we have sorting capabilities, we have all sorts of things to guarantee uh, a free and fair and, and fairly counted election. I want to go to Lynn Bernstein in one second. I'd be remiss. Um, uh, we do need to ask for money. Uh, this is a very low budget operation. Uh, the four of us run this uh, call every week, um, uh, uh, three engineers and, and me. And uh, uh, so if you, I think Steve put that where checks can go. It's easy to send in a check than it is to do digitally these days uh, to the free press. It's a tax deductible CICJ, a 501c3. We are a very low budget operation. This is our 116th call for God's sakes. And we still have 68 people on the call after all this time. Okay, so, and we've been able to bring people like John Brakey and so forth, Emily and, and uh, Ray, uh, Dan Wolf and uh, uh, Ray McClendon, uh, uh, um, Andrew Miller together, and we, we have had an impact. So please do consider uh, donating. Okay, uh, now um, uh, we're gonna go to Lynn Bernstein in North Carolina. Uh, Wendy, did you wanna, Wendy is our moderator, by the way, she's the one who, uh, keeps you up uh, going in it to 90 seconds. Uh, we got her because she's so she's tough. Uh, 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 go ahead, uh, uh, Wendy. Did you want to say something real quick, and then we'll uh, get to uh, Lynn. Thank you so much. Um, and just thanks everyone for being here. I'm so excited to have the whole crew together of all these awesome heroes. Um, I just wanted to really just iterate for anyone who isn't familiar with John's work that he really is a hero. I mean, he went to Arizona to oversee the fraud. It if it wasn't for him. We, we have no idea where we would be if the ninjas didn't have oversight of the oversight. So his work, Ray's work with everyone here, that's, they will prevent the next big lie. And I also just want to say how, um, like John's kind of a little bit modest. Um, his work really pronounces the threats to democracy happening right now. He's being sued in Pima County um, for requesting ballot images in, um, Oh God, it's slipping my mind, but in a different county. <laughs> but he's made a public records request for these ballot images and he's being sued for making this request. And him and Lynn got trespassed in North Carolina, which she'll talk about, but just the threats to not even, and I'm in Florida, people are getting arrested for voting. Like we need to get behind this work and support these people that are here today. And just thank you so much, guys. We love you all. Yeah, I, I mean, how dare you, Lynn Bernstein, <laughs> uh, make a public records request you should go to prison. So let's hear about why they're sending you, trying to send you to jail for making a public records request. Well, so yeah, so John made the public records request and it, it's incredible that uh, somebody can be sued for making a public records request. That's gonna put a big chill on what we're already seeing, right? We're already seeing elections offices go dark. So let me just introduce myself. I'm um, Lynn Bernstein. I'm the founder of Transparent Elections NC. 
And um, I live in Wake County, which is the largest county in North Carolina. And um, a couple years ago, I went to our Board of Elections office uh, to go observe processes on election night because the boards are supposed to be there. And our board was present. They had three people present, but they wouldn't let me in even though there was a quorum and by law they were supposed to. And so I pushed back on them about that. And so they decided um, in order to continue keeping the public out, they would have only two board members. And so that wouldn't meet a quorum and so that they could still keep us out. And so um, John Brakey, who is amazing, he's my mentor and one of my best friends, he came here in May um, for, our, for our primary for 2022. And we decided we were gonna have a small protest at the Wake Board of Elections building. And so we, we drove up there on a Saturday after early voting. And you know we're walking on the public right of way and standing and looking at signs and figuring out where can we have people legally and safely stand. Um, and then the election director, he called, uh, he had the he had the security guard call the Raleigh Police Department and have us trespassed, um, saying that we looked suspicious and that we were tampering with a gate that was closed. Well, we did get the security video, the gates are open, we weren't doing anything. Um, and, and so when the police showed up, they even said, they're not doing it, you know, they didn't do anything. Even the police said, it seems like we were being blackballed. But what trespassed means in North Carolina, if you're trespassed, it's, it usually applies to a private uh, residence or a private business. And so what that means is when somebody trespasses you, um, that means that if you ever go on that property again, you'll be arrested on the spot and charged with criminal trespass. So John and I are trespassed from the Wake Board of Elections building, but that building also is where all the meetings happen. It's where the logic and accuracy tests happen. It's where early voting happens. It's where candidates go to file to run for office. And so I haven't been able to go there for five months now. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's upsetting for me personally, but it's upsetting on a larger scale because what I had been doing for the last few years is I had been reaching out to uh, groups of people who were very curious about elections and who really wanted to see for themselves. They wanted to understand what the truth was. And so I said, you know what, guys, come down to the Wake Board of Elections building. I'll explain to you what they're doing because they don't really explain what they're doing. And I did that for a couple months and then I got banned. Well, what do you think that message what do you, how do you think that message lands with people who are already not sure about what to believe in these elections? And so, you know, we do see elections offices going dark. We see observing credentials being taken away. We see people being sued for just asking for a public record that they had previously been given um, in previous elections. And so it's just a very unsettling trend that, um, there's not going to be the oversight needed so that we can go and observe and then vouch for the elections, right? There's lots of jurisdictions that everything's on the up and up. And if they shut people out of even viewing those, it really, I mean, it does start creating some more skepticism. Yes, indeed. I, I will say that I think we can all see you are a very suspicious looking person. So uh, I, can, I can understand the police uh, taking notice. Um, and um, you have been, I know you want, don't want to talk about, but you've been subjected to things that your family should not have been subjected to based on the fact that you are an election protection activist. Um, right. And uh, this is going on as we've seen with the horrifying attack uh, on, the, on uh, the Pelosi family. And, um, you know, this is opening a very, very, bad door. If this isn't Gestapo fascism, uh, then uh, we don't know uh, what it is. I'm sure John and uh, others uh, have family members who um, uh, have um, barely survived it, let's put it that way. My right. wife's parents were both um, in concentration camps, and uh, this is the door opening. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we see Steve Bannon urging um, uh, Bolsonaro to not concede you know, we know what that's about. So when you are a hero also, um, I know you don't wanna talk about the details of what you've been through, but it's to uh, election protection uh, is no longer a part of the game, let's put it that way. Thank you very much. Yeah. We will get to questions. I wanna go through everyone first uh, who's lined up. 
to present. Uh, uh, Elena, uh, uh, you'll stay with us, I hope, and John mm -hmm. Brakey. Another major player in election protection is Dan Wolf. Uh, Dan has uh, software uh, that he is promoting to help verify the vote counts. And I'll let uh, Dan, uh, uh, you're quite expert. If you can take five minutes and tell us what you got here, it will be greatly appreciated. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Harvey. Appreciate it. Um, I'm Dan Wolf. I'm the founder of Democracy Counts, which is a 501c3. We are the originator of, of a thing called the America Counts Election Audit Initiative, uh, which is composed of various apps. Um, I'm going to speak generally for a minute. Um, election fraud is as old as America and probably as old as ancient Greece. All of American election officials are elected or appointed by partisan officials. We rely mostly on blind faith that our elections are accurate. Guaranteeing the accuracy of counting and reporting requires independent auditing. We don't let banks audit themselves. Why do we let election officials audit themselves, right? But, but now there's skepticism about, you know, why do we think there's so much fraud? Most of government employees are ethical and law abiding, but part of it, partisan officials can play loose with the rules, especially if their job's on the line, they're part of a member of a political machine, there's little or no risk of exposure or punishment. So like hockey players, partisans will try to get away with things if the referee isn't looking. The problem is <clears throat> American elections don't have referees. The so-called audits and recounts that are run in states are not independent and they are often easily gamed and courts are ineffective to remedy this because the evidence is easily concealed and they won't let people in to look at the systems. They won't grant discovery orders and so on. So no one is systematically and independently collecting empirical data on election trustworthiness. The tools have not been there, nor the intent. This is a problem for even for election officials who are honest, who personally believe in the sanctity of the vote and do everything they can to guarantee it. In today's atmosphere, no one is trusted by everyone. We must restore trust by creating conditions of trustworthiness. And that, of course, you know, goes to John Brakey's statement about transparency. That is the key word. Transparency equals trustworthiness, if the election is trustworthy. So trust but verify, as a certain president famously <laughs> said. To do this, we must run independent audit checks. In the process of verifying good elections, we will also discover instances of error. Whether those errors are evidence of fraud or not, their discovery will lead to improvements in election processes, more justified trust in our elections, and to better overall representation in the halls of government, which of course is the ultimate point of democracy. But legislators are not going to authorize and spend on independent audits. The, the loosey-goosey system we have serves them perfectly, just as it is. So we, the people, have to take the decision to conduct independent audits out of their hands. And these audits have to be of such a quality that they are actionable in court. That is a very high bar. America Counts election audit system is based on the idea that we, the people, with new technology, can conduct these audits ourselves. We have tested two apps, WannaVote and ActualVote. WannaVote measures voter suppression and replicates precinct level data measuring the accuracy of the count. We've beta tested it both successfully and unfortunately unsuccessfully, the results depending on local culture. ActualVote produces data about the accuracy of the reporting of that count. It's been used hundreds of times since 2020 all around the US. Uh, Lynn and Emily have used it a lot. In this election, we are taking actual vote to the next level. If we are successful in breaking through to a mass public, it will set us up to roll out one vote in 2024 to help quantify election, uh, to help quantify voter suppression and help verify which results are accurate and which are not, and therefore which need to be challenged. In, in states where precinct results or tapes are printed out, Actual vote will virtually close the opportunity space for error and fraud in vote reporting. Let me repeat that. If actual vote were used ubiquitously in states where poll tapes are posted, the opportunity space for error and fraud in vote reporting would virtually disappear. This would lead to greater trust in elections that are legitimate and to repairing elections where we find problems. 
Now, America's account system won't end error and fraud. There are myriad ways to distort elections. Gerrymandering and voter suppression are really fraud under cover of law, but they are vulnerable to defeat by higher turnout. But we can reduce the extent and impact of error and fraud. Actual look just the beginning. This is the first step in what hopefully will be a global tool system for election auditing, one that will empower not only Americans, but people around the world struggling for fair representation in their governing body. We've received interest uh, requests for information from Kenya, Nicaragua, Mexico, Pakistan, and Gabon. Jason Flatley, our head of product development, can explain briefly. Harvey, do you mind if he takes two minutes? It'll take me less than a half and less than a minute to wrap up. Go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, Jason, go for it. Where is Jason? Is he unmuted? I don't see. I'm him. not sure. Um, Jason Flatley. Okay. Yeah, Jason Flatley. I, I thought he was on. Too. There he is. Here he is. Thank okay, you, Jason. Jason. Yeah. Okay, I'm unmuted now. I'm going to share my screen really quick. Oh, it says disabled screen sharing. Can you, Steve, are we able to enable his screen sharing? Or do you have a, a link you can put in the chat? Uh, I can. It's a Google presentation. I'd have to share it with the relevant person. Uh, Steve, can we do that? Steve, uh, yeah? Okay. Uh, Steve, okay, there's a link in the chat. Yeah. Um, send me the. Go ahead now, try it. Oh, sharing screen. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about actual vote. I'm gonna go into presentation mode right now. This is the uh, vote report auditing app that Dan was talking about, and it works on poll tapes. Um, and here are some pictures of poll tapes posted at vote centers on election night. Um, actual vote is a free app that empowers you to video record the vote data on the poll tapes. This data can be compared to the official results uh, to check for discrepancies. Um, so here's here's a picture of actual vote in action, and we just released a new version of this app with lots of improvements, including for the first time ever, state-specific guidance for how poll tapes work in your state, so that no matter where you live, you have an idea of how to use actual vote in your area, which is a, a huge step forward. Let on me the left point out side that here, the, uh, the tape on the right uh, shows uh, that obviously is from Georgia, 2021, and it shows John Ossoff uh, defeating David Perdue. That's a nice choice. Thank you. Uh, that's correct. This is tape 2971 on our public website that I chose to use for an example here. Um, this is me in the pictures. It's it's um, three shots. On the left-hand side, um, it's an example of you arrive at the polling station. There's the poll tapes on the wall. I'm going to pull out my phone and fire up actual vote. Um, and right there in the middle of the screen, you see record. Underneath, it says actual vote in Georgia, where if you click there, it'll explain that in Georgia, you can totally go to vote centers and poll tapes will be posted. So please take some videos. In the middle, I've pressed the record button and um, I'm in the middle of the tape and I'm making sure that that recording is straight in focus and I can easily read the numbers. As you can see on the right hand side where Harvey helpfully pointed out that Ossoff is winning, he's got 177 votes. And by doing this step right here, um, we've preserved data about the election day totals at the beginning of the chain of custody, which is super powerful because um, uh, for the the data that your recordings are stored on our website for um, safekeeping and further analysis, and then you can compare them to the official results. And I've showed two cases here. At the top, um, and, and this is a um, pretend scenario with Amelia Arnold and Bill Brown running against each other. At the top, um, you can see the poll tape totals compared to the official totals for Amelia Arnold. Everything matches, which is good. That means the vote reporting was done correctly. On the right hand side for Bill Brown at Clawson Library the poll tape totals don't agree with the official totals. And this is the point of actual vote. If you preserve the data on the poll tapes, you can uncover evidence of this discrepancy and potentially um, generate a court case to force this discrepancy to be repaired. Meanwhile, on the bottom is another um, outcome of actual vote where everything che checks out. The poll tape totals and the official totals match in all cases, which is also great because it enhances trust in a genuinely trustworthy election system and can help defend against bad faith accusations of election fraud. Um, get actual vote at americaccounts.us slash actual vote portal right now. I believe that link is in the chat. And also, please spread the word, especially uh, with folks that you may know who live in battleground states. Um, and and um, anybody can go to our actual vote portal and check how poll tapes work in your state. And um, so we try to get lots of actual vote users here for the midterms.
Thank you. Fantastic. Go ahead, uh, Richard. I'm uh, rather. Um, um, Dan, do you want to finish up? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, and by the way, we have a new one minute 30 cartoon video on actual vote, which uh, if anybody wants to see, we'll be happy to show it to them. So um, you put now, the link in the chat, can you put the link in the chat? Um, is Jason, do we have a link yet to it or? Why don't, if you, well, okay, go ahead. Lisa. I'll think about it. Yeah, yeah. He can probably post a link that will, a prospective link that will um, allow people to look at it in an hour or two. That would be my guess that will, that will happen. So now with respect to the rest of the election integrity movement, America Counts audit checks will complement the tools of John Brakey and Ray Lutz. And I think you're going to hear from Ray later. Um, their access to ballot images will eliminate the need for most of our apps. Um, our our want to vote app can still be used for measuring um, uh, voter uh, um, uh, suppression, which is still very valuable for court cases, but it would become in, you know, uh, unnecessary uh, for other kinds of audits. But when they don't get those uh, ballot images, ours will be the only tool available at this time. So here's how I think things will play out in the last, next few years. John and Ray will obtain ballot images from jurisdictions that are not trying to hide anything, thank goodness. The result will be validation of those elections. Those jurisdictions that fight tooth and nail against release of ballot images will go on our hot list for close attention because they may be hiding something. And so the data we collect may implicate them in error and possibly even fraud. If this happens, the ensuing scandals and lawsuits are likely to lead to reform and ultimately greater trustworthiness. So that's that's the way I think about it. Thank you. You can get more details at americaccounts.us or you can write me. I'll put my email and uh, address in the chat and I'm happy to answer any questions. This is a lot of fun. Thank you. Well, it's, it's, it's more than fun, to, uh, Dan. Your work, work is really spectacular. Uh, it will definitely have an impact going forward, I think. You know, uh, we we have learned in, in this election protection movement that um, um, we can't take anything for granted. And we've, with your help mm -hmm. and John and others, we've developed amazing tools to help protect the vote count. And there's someone next, uh, uh, we'll do Emily and then um, uh, Ray Lutz uh, to talk about additional work that's going on uh, to do this. We have an election eight days away. By the way, I, I wanna make uh, clear, we're not gonna meet next week. Uh, we will not have a session next week. It's the night before the election. And um, I'm sure we lost a lot of people tonight because they're out trick or treating. <laughs> but this has been the treat to prevent the trick. And um, uh, so next week, I'm going to be assuming that people will be on their phones or canvassing. Uh, we will meet the first week, the first Monday after the election um, in the middle of November to see if we still have a democracy or, or anything re re resembling it. Uh, but uh, Emily Levy, uh, if you want to talk about souvenirs and then Ray Lutz about Audit USA, and then we'll open it up to questions and comments. Go ahead, Emily. Thanks, Harvey. Since you mentioned trick-or-treating, I'll say that when I go around to polling place after polling place using actual vote to take video um, on election night, I think of it as trick-or-treating for democracy. So you, <laughs> you could go do that next week. Um, so I want to... Audit, U, Audit Elections USA, John, the group that John Brakey leads, Lynn's group, Democracy, Transparent Elections North Carolina, and um, America Accounts are all member groups of scrutineers, which is an online community that I founded um, in January of 2020 to help people who want to do this work for election transparency. Can Emily, you just muted, honey. You got to unmute. Sorry, where did I did it? No, sorry, go ahead. You're good. Where did I leave off? <laughs> I don't know it. when I when I got muted. So Start only over. like three seconds. We yeah. Got ah, it. Okay. So what, I, to create, it's an scrutineers is an online community that I created for people to connect with others who want to do this work, learn the basics. We offer a lot of different training to our membership, 
and take action together. So if you're feeling at all isolated in this work or, or like you don't quite know how to plug in and how do these things fit together and which thing does it make sense for you to do, Scrutineers is a place for you to go and, and learn about all these sorts of things that we're talking about in this hour. Um, we charge a one-time fee of $1.99 for membership, which is something we do to keep bots out of the site. You can find us at scrutineers.org. Um, in addition to being involved with the projects that you've already heard about tonight, um, we are we have a project called the After Project Act for Trusted Election Results, um, in which we are encouraging people to observe the processing and counting of votes in their local area, whether it's in their county election office or it might be in a web or something like that, that's a temporary facility where votes are being processed. We have a training that's less than an hour, plus some additional materials to help people get the background they need in order to do that work. So I know that the election is really close. It's only eight days away, but it's not at all too late to do any of the stuff that we're talking about tonight. So if you're interested in taking video of poll tapes, you can absolutely still do that. If you're interested in observing in your local election office or wherever votes are counted in your community, you can absolutely still do that. We've got training on both things at scrutineers.org um, and we'd welcome anyone here to become part of our community. Thank you very much. And Emily's been, Scrutineers has been with us right from the start. This is our 116th call and she's been uh, on quite a few of them and her work is great. Thank you, Emily. Thanks so for much. the opportunity to be here, Harvey. Um, you're, you're welcome. We're going to go to Ray Lutz um, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, Ray uh, and I share um, dual um, veteran status in both the anti nuclear movement. Ray was uh, essential to shutting the San Onofre nuclear power plant, um, uh, and I worked on that as well. And, and now we're here we are in the election protection movement. I don't know what comes next, Ray, but uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's win this one. So your group is Audit USA, and uh, no. what do you got for us today? No, sorry, my group is called Citizens Oversight. Um, that is John Brakey's group you're getting it mixed up with. Audit USA, uh, okay. Yeah, you're, Citizens you're Oversight so is my group. Okay. So um, let me give you the quick background. So back in 2006, um, we were fighting Blackwater actually here in, in San Diego. And I video recorded the recall election, watching every single ballot you know, be checked and counted. And I thought, gee, that'd be great to take, basically take a picture of every ballot as it goes in. Uh, I tried at the time, you know, we had Deborah Bowen here as uh, Secretary of State and she was listening, but the equipment wouldn't do it. Time has changed now. So as you know, we're, we're now, most of the equipment, like 93% of the equipment in the largest counties uh, make ballot images. And fortunately, uh, we have John Brakey advocating for the release of them. And, and um, he, I think we all you know, uh, are really lucky that he's on the front lines there for us. Um, but we have a problem. Uh, we have, if we get these hundreds of thousands of images, even if you're really fast, uh, it's hard to go through them. It's hard to find anything because they're just too many. Um, so in 2019, um, we announced the development of Audit Engine, which runs in the cloud and is able to help us go through these. Um, and what I want to do first is just quickly, if I can, let me see if this works out. Um, I'll try this. Uh, and yeah, so if I'm sharing the screen, you'll see Audit Engine here. I'm just going to click through a couple of these screens. So this is a Bartow County in Georgia. We have some election files that have been uploaded and um, we have uh, audit, uh, you can declare an audit job and then it runs through these various stages. It, it is <laughs> quite a bit of work, but fortunately we can employ up to 10,000 uh, computers at a time in the cloud. And this is what is pretty nice about this. And then in this final report, we have all these different, for each stage, we generate a report so it can be checked. And then finally, here's, for example, a recent um, re discrepancy report for Bartow County, where we have uh, pie charts that say how many were agreed and disagreed and so forth, breaking it all down. 
Um, so we can get into also individual contests, um, looking at each, um, any contest that you want, even down to individual ballots. So we've been able to find things like in Bar in, in Fulton County, we found five ballots from DeKalb County. In Bartow, in this county here, Bartow County, we found one ballot that was improperly adjudicated. So, so, so this really puts a lot of scrutiny on, on the election. This will catch almost all uh, what I call opportunistic hacks, meaning that if somebody says, calls up, you know, and says, I want 11,780 votes, and they alter the counters or they change it at that point, it would definitely catch that. There, there's still some ways to go, and we're working on fine tuning this as we go forward, but uh, we, we now have this as a tool. Um, the key thing is going to be uh, how do we deploy this? We've kind of been reluctant in a way because, you know, if you say, I want to audit the election, and they automatically say, well, obviously, then you're an election denier and you hate elections. So we have to be able to let us, you know, ki kind of tone down that, that idea of the, that auditing means you're an election denier and allow us to do auditing. I mean, it was on both sides in the past. Uh, we were uh, auditing for, you know, we did the hand count for when Hillary versus uh, Trump. Um, and then, you know, Stein was conducting that. Um, so we want the op option of, of auditing. But of course, we're not saying that the, uh, you know, deny the results and say, I'm not going to get out of office. Uh, and you're going to have to, hand, you know, basically take me out of handcuffs. Um, so this is a tool. Uh, we need to uh, know about it, and and probably what we're looking at in this election. It and let me just say this: this does not help get out the vote or anything like that. So I don't want to distract everyone toward toward this right now because, like the functions of Emily and others, uh, you know Ray um, McClellan and others that are to get out the vote are really like super important right now. This is kind of after the fact, we're planning for it. But in Georgia, we may have some pretty close contests there. And so we may want to, uh, if, if there is dispute, then we have this tool in our, in our tool belt. And so that again, it's Ray Lutz and uh, it's with Citizens Oversight, not Audit USA. So, and by the way, uh, Harvey, just wanted to mention, I, I posted or tried to, that Biden has not uh, has appointed more judges than any other president since JFK. So I, I don't know if he's been reluctant to appoint them as you were saying, but maybe there's more depth to that than I'm not seeing. <laughs> no, I'm glad to hear it actually. And um, I appreciate that. I always enjoy being corrected. Uh, unfortunately, it takes up most of the time being corrected, but nonetheless, um, uh, you are on the case and um, I, I thank you for your great work. Uh, as you can see behind me, uh, that's where the radioactive waste from San Onofre is being stored from the tideline, um, uh, where, where these three reactors sit and tons of radioactive waste are right next to the ocean. Uh, Ray, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, for those of you worried by, wondering, by the way, I'm wearing a Fordham t-shirt because my daughter uh, has gotten a master's degree from there, and uh, we and we are trying to uh, enticed uh, some a, a a professor from Fordham to join our calls in the future, and I'll keep you posted on that. Okay, now we can go to questions. Uh, we're at three minutes until Steve. If you can stay a little longer, uh, everybody needs to give Steve Caruso an incredible hand here. Uh, he engineered the call, uh, made the transition, got us on um, uh, YouTube, uh, the whole deal. Uh, so uh, th Steve Caruso, your work. Today has been spectacular, and Wendy, uh, our bouncer here, has also been uh, terrific. So uh, thanks for everybody, Steve. We do want to. We got uh, five hands up, so let's let's move ahead. Uh, Eric Lazarus, uh, what do you got? I just able to quickly um, know about seed the vote. I, I'm I've been volunteering here um, in Philadelphia. Um, it's the same guy who I had talk yesterday uh, last week on seedthevote.org. Um, um, feel encouraged to get in touch with me. We're knocking on doors every day from uh, 10 a.m. until um, 6 p.m. 
Um, and we could uh, we could use uh, more volunteers. We have places. This uh, this lovely Airbnb that you see me at right now. Um, you can help John Fetterman um, become um, uh, a senator. Um, and uh, uh, see the vote has um, organizations in other places besides Philadelphia, and they're all done through labor. They're all so you get to work alongside uh, canvassers in this case. Um, who are workers from Unite Here, which is a hospitality union. Um, you can you can knock on doors. It's all very well organized. Come out. If you come to Philadelphia, you get to work with me. Thanks so much. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. I personally want to thank John Fetterman for debating, um, you know, in his post-stroke uh, state. Been a lot of controversy about that, but he is a really gutsy guy, and uh, listening to John Fetterman after a stroke is infinitely uh, more palatable than hearing. I won't mention it. Anyway, uh, but thank you so much for that, uh, Eric. And post the link in the chat if you would. You're doing what we advocate, which is door-to-door -door canvassing. And in the, uh, in the two years following this uh, midterm election, leading up to 22, from 22 to 24, we will be emphasizing the demand that uh, money go not to buying TV ads, but to sustaining door-to-door -door canvassing. I wanna point out that after two hours, we still have 63 people on the call, uh, spectacular people. It's just great to have you all with us. Again, we will not meet next week, uh, but we will meet the week after. Ruth Strauss, uh, can, what you got for us, Ruth? Dr. Ruth, are you there? Uh, trying yeah, to... I needed to be unmuted. Um, can you hear me? Yes, go for it. Okay, I just a very quick one. What was the name, because I can't store the chat on my phone, what was the name of the organization of the gentleman who was talking about taking um, pictures of the poll tapes? Uh, he had a website. Dan Wolf, can you tell uh, Ruth what your organization's name is Dan Wolf. Sure. The 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 part that you want to know is America Counts. And uh that's the name of the initiative. The website is americacounts.us. Okay. I think the gentleman who was taking the poll tapes had a different site or no the one that's taking pictures of the poll tapes is on America Counts. The yeah, the, the app is on America Counts. Perfect. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you Ruth. Um, uh, Connie Klein. Connie Klein is one of the great organizers in Cleveland uh, against uh, <laughs> what she calls uh, Enema, uh, the Enema Power Company, um, uh, First Energy. She's been fighting uh, the nuclear plants in northern Ohio literally forever. And um, uh, Connie, it's just an honor to have you with us. So uh, tell us what you got, please. Thanks, Harvey. Um, I I'm very intrigued and i think it's very important the auditing aspect um my question is you know i i could imagine being at a polling place and using my phone to photograph the results and having somebody vociferously complain and possibly have it even result in some kind of violence. So I, I, I think um, I'd like to know what kind of marketing message um, can be established to, um, I, I agree completely with one of the speakers that said, um, you know, the minute you talk about audits, um, you're talking about election denial and and fraud and um, you know how can we make audits how can we market audits to be um, innocuous a, a normal procedure um, to ensure um, election accuracy? Well, I want to. Um, that's a good question. I want to quote Robin Williams. Robin Williams was. Uh, portraying a um, an evangelical on TV raising money. <laughs> and the guy said, the word audit does not appear in the Bible. <laughs> so there you go. 
All right. Um, um, uh, yes. I mean, Lynn, Lynn popped her hand up. You, Lynn, did you want to answer Connie? Yeah, I, I do have an answer for her because we do work with elections officials trying to convince them of this poll tape project, the um, taking video recordings with actual vote. And, you know, some of the positive stuff that we've had is, you know, when we go to them and we say, look, you know, there are people who are just making stuff up to sow chaos in our elections. And if you have people that are actually video recording um, these receipts, these poll tapes, that really prevents um, somebody else then from fabricating that tape. And so it really helps them, it helps them if we go, it helps to vouch for them the same way that the um, ballot images do as well. You know, if jurisdictions release these ballot images to everyone, it sort of does away with this idea that, oh, somebody could alter the ballot image. Well, if everyone has the ballot image and one person alters it, that person is gonna be completely ignored. And so this is really helping build confidence because in places where the poll tapes all match up, it, it actually generates confidence. And then places where we're finding some issues, it, it really helps us to improve our elections moving forward. And so that's kind of how we pitch it. And we've had a lot of success with some jurisdictions in talking to them about it in that way. Good. I also wanted to ask you, I, I put a message in the chat. Did you report any of the stuff that happened to you to the DOJ or the FBI or is um, so I'm filing, we filed a lawsuit in federal court uh, to get my rights restored um, because there wasn't any due process in banning some, trespassing somebody in that way. Um, I did reach out to the police when we had uh, threats against us and they've largely ignored those. You know, I think because I don't fall anymore, I used to be working in elections as a poll uh, worker. And I think had the same thing happened, if I were just a poll worker, I, it probably would have gotten more traction with the police. But because I'm an advocate, um, you know, it's largely, unfortunately, the elections officials who are pushing back on me. And so, you know, it's really a strange place that we find ourselves in for organizations that um, we are asking for evidence of elections. And, and like another speaker said, you know, somebody called me a stop the steal person, which is just kind of, kind of crazy. So yeah. Good luck to you. Yes. Good luck, Lynn. Thank you so much. Um, uh, who do we got here? Mimi. Mimi, are you unmuted? You Hi, get... thanks. I, I am now. Thank you. I had to touch your screen. It's nice to be here. Nice to see you, Wendy. Uh, Ray, I met you at Philly DNC. Thanks for all your uh, great work. I'm here in California. And um, just a quick comment is thank you for all the anti-nuclear work that all of you are doing. It's just mind blowing that Diablo Canyon is being extended. And I wanted to let folks know that Friends of the Earth have petitions and other actions going on. And Friends of the Earth split with the Sierra Club when um, Diablo Canyon was first proposed. So, so follow Friends of the Earth if you're into anti-nuclear. And then um, I, I wanted to, I was wondering what we ordinary folks could do on um, election day or, or around elections because I'm in Santa Clara County. So I'm in, you know, San Jose area. And a friend of mine was putting her ballot in a ballot box in Campbell, California last night and at a school. And she was being, she knew she was being filmed from another, from a parking lot across the street. So is there anything we ordinary citizens can do in such a situation? And I also wanted to bring um, attention to folks that do not call the police website. That is a way for um, recourse without involving the police. So it's simply don't call the police. I believe it's a dot com and their resources in the United States and um, Canada. So that might help folks. Um, maybe it could help you, Lynn, in your um, trespassing quandary. And I'm so sorry to hear that. And um, I'm glad you're trying to quash that because that's just ridiculous if you were on you know, a sidewalk or so forth on the public domain. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe John Brakey, you're with us um, still. Uh, can you talk about what people can do when they discover that 
as they're depositing a ballot in a, in a drop box that they're being filmed. I, see I would wave myself and <laughs> say hi. And uh, because this is a slippery slope, is that if you can take away their right to do that, what are you giving up? Okay. And, and furthermore, I always tell people that, you know, these drop boxes, I don't think they're as secure as people say they are. I have a great drop box in the front of my house it's called a mailbox. And guess what? They take a picture of it before they turn it over to the election department. Okay. And, uh, and you know, uh, and when it comes to this election, I am extremely nervous and I'm nervous because of the election department's going dark. You know, here I was in North Carolina with Lynn, you know, uh, never expected to be trespassed. And Lynn has a civil rights suit. So then I leave there and I go, well, I'm suing Maricopa, so I don't think I'll go there for their election August 2nd. Pima, well, I got that one straightened out really good. In fact, Maricopa, I think the whole state's pretty good. But to Santa Cruz County, they're begging me to get down there and do something. I went down there and I was assaulted twice. I was then uh, sued for asking for public records. And they and what it was was the cast vote record database. And in this video that you know above my head is that QR code, watch it and you'll learn about a lot of what's going on. But I'd say this is that I'm not planning to be out there on election night. I'm working with other election people across the country, a lot of them here. And, uh, and I just wanna say, Daniel Wolf, remarkable what you've put together. Ray Lutz, thank you for being the professor and developing a program. You know, to many people here that we've developed a group of really, as John said originally, a Margaret Mead team of people who can make a difference. And so basically, only thing I hope people will do is that on election night, Democrats have painted themselves in the corner. And, you know, uh, Jonathan Simon wrote a book about what could happen with the red shift. And I just see Democrats standing up real quick and trying to be the big guy and concede. And they do have a responsibility to us. And we know that if those ballot images are there. They can be quickly gotten to with the cast vote record, get them to Ray Lutz and run them. But, you know, I, 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 I'm afraid what's going to happen this election. Overall, I'm hoping for a big pink wave of women because that movement is happening worldwide. And I hope it's here still. And, uh, and the October surprises have been coming in one after the other. So how, does, how, how I see it, I'm worried. And thank yeah. you for um, you guys. I wonder, so, I wonder, you so if I, oh, what about ahead. being filmed? What about being filmed at a Dropbox? I mean, do I film them back? What do, what do I tell people wave, to do? Wave, it's their right to do the hat. And uh, okay. you, know, you take away their right, you lose your right. And we've lost enough. Listen, uh, I watched a film of me and Steve and a couple other people four years ago giving a speech. We wouldn't dare give that speech. I have 400 videos on YouTube. I don't dare use YouTube anymore because they keep threatening to shut me down. I put the video on Facebook and I couldn't share it for three or four days until they must have watched it and said it was okay. You know, uh, we got censorship up the yin yang affecting us. Well, of yeah. course, now that Elon yeah. Musk has taken over Twitter, uh, <laughs> everything is going to be super groovy. Uh, yeah. I know guy, I know guys in college who would uh, really, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with the term mooning, but uh, they, they would have had a lot of fun with those cameras at the drop boxes. Um, Dan Wolf, did you want to say yeah. anything? Dan? Yeah, yeah, just, just a couple of words um, in backwards order about the uh, intimidation and about marketing. As far as intimidation and filming goes through, goes, goes um, you know, our app, you know, actual vote, which you, anybody can download for free. Um, it's though its principal use is for recording poll tapes. What it does is it video records anything. So our process is that when we get a video, we check to make sure that it's not a cat video or something, and then we post it on a public facing database. But if we get videos in that pe where people are using actual vote, even if they're not recording poll tapes, 
they can record it and you know they can record an instance of intimidation and and it will instantly upload to our secure website and it will be connected with you so we will be able to know how to get hold of you or you can get hold of us to get a you know basically lawsuits can come from this what we're about in addition to collecting quantitative information is converting anecdotal information into quantitative information that can be used in lawsuits that can be used in law enforcement actions and so on so the more people who use this who save the evidence in this way you know the more the the more power we have to push back against that now as far as marketing goes um you know in 1929 there was a small crack in the stock market it turned out that a that a big part of that crack was the result of of inaccurate reporting on financials by public companies that people were investing in and the bubble was created and so on the congress in 1933 enacted the securities and exchange act which created the the sec the sec was based on the idea that we need to have a functioning trustworthy stock market in order to do that we need to make public companies books transparent and in order to make them transparent we require that public companies be audited every quarter even if they are completely within the lines of the law so most public companies i'm sure especially big ones are completely honest all the time but they have to audit themselves be audited anyway by independent auditors so one of the things we need to do as a movement is to keep talking about audits as a uh you know as something that is not about necess- just denying election audit election results or finding fraud and so on it's about making sure that the system itself is so trustworthy that the public interest in having a democracy is fulfilled by the transparency and i got to say you know we we now after all these years thanks to Dan and John and Emily and and so many others we have a very clear well documented uh sustainable uh, way of doing an infrastructure that will guarantee an election we know how to do this it's mm-hmm. not it may be rocket science but but we know how to do it and and um going to 2024 um we want to make the same difference we made in 2020 which is that we want and we have the technology to do an election that can be 100% verified and and that's what we need to do and uh, hopefully we'll get it in 22 but by 24 we should have the entire media the entire electorate totally um educated in how to protect an election there's just no reason uh, not to be able to do that at this point in time same as we know how to convert to 100% green energy. So it's now 7:16. Uh I know Steve is going to pass out. Uh we if we can go to 7:30 um and call it quits at Eastern time, uh that would be reasonable. So uh we've got um uh, uh 13 more minutes. We've got Wendy, um uh Sandy, Ray and Justin. A uh, Wendy go ahead please. Thank you. Appreciate it Sluggo. I know it's about 4:20 where you're at so you're <laughs> itching yourself. I know. Um, yeah, we're getting, I just, we're getting close. But I actually <laughs> am in New Jersey. That's another story. Oh, okay. Anyway, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm actually just going to like reiterate real quick a couple of things that um I've heard from um Ray and John who I just I really can't like reiterate how much like all, all of our panelists if you will call like are just can't underestimate how important the work is that they're doing here. um john always uh talks about like we talk about how um just the act of oversight like just having the eyes there is going to deter any kind of malicious activity whether it comes in even through like software updates that will attack the machine before you can have any kind of cvr or anything you know so um or, don't like, quote me on some of the de- the technical details but just having the eyes watching having us having this conversation is moving that forward and i just thank everybody for being a part of it and another point that ray makes a lot that is really i remember the first time i heard it a while ago and it, it's true it's that um it shifted the way i think about electronic voting is that humans make random mistakes but machines don't that you can trace when there's a machine mistake so i think that that's just a way to um to look at things that and, and really figure out how moving forward in this new millennia to um 
to just have the best way possible to engage um, the practice. Like voting doesn't end when you cast your ballot. You have to make sure it gets counted. And I saw, um, I don't know if she wants, if, if there's uh, maybe 90 seconds for it, but I know um, Susan Pinchon, I don't know if she has um, an announcement that she wants to make while she's here to put her hand up. I just want to put that out there because we only have a few more minutes, but thank you all so much. I'll be quiet and let the others talk. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Susan, if you want to speak up, raise your hand, please. Um, Susan Pinchon in Florida, one of the mainstays of the movement. And I'm going to propose right now that between now and 24, uh, certainly by the end of 23 or even earlier, that we have a definitive handbook on, on how to protect elections, including Dan's work and uh, Ray's and all, that we lay it out there in unmistakable terms. This is what needs to, to happen to protect an election. This is the Bible, um, scan paper ballots, the whole deal, uh, election tapes, um, um, uh, everything. Uh, it should not be all that complicated. And uh, we need to put it out there as we need to update the book on the Georgia miracle to be the definitive Bible on grassroots uh, uh, turnout and um, and and door to door canvassing and how you really do get the vote out. If we can have those two documents ready uh, by 24. Uh, maybe we'll have a chance. Um, uh, Sandy, um, oh, Harvey. Oh, it, it's Susan Pinchon. Did you call on me? Oh, yeah. I think uh, uh, well, can you come after uh, Justin? Um, oh, yeah, sure. Almost, almost done here. We still have 50 people with us, Susan. Uh, rather, um, uh, Sandy Bozinius. Uh, go ahead, please. Yeah, um, I've been, I'm coming, I'm in Ohio, Ohio, which you know very well, Harvey. And um, I tell you, this Ohio Democratic Party, I don't think they care if they win. Um, we've got somebody running against Jim Jordan and no support at all. I don't even know if they're going to be at the polling stations to deliver the the ballots, you know, the, the slates. So. But anyway, what I'm calling about having canvassed in, in Ohio, dealing with this Ohio Democratic Party, um, I'm wondering if in the future we can return, we can revisit this minivan. Um, I know you guys mentioned it before and just throwing that out for perhaps a future discussion about what this minivan is really all about because it doesn't seem to be about, it seems to be about more about collecting data than anything else, but I could be wrong. So that's all I wanna say for now, thanks. All right, thank oh. you, Sandy. Much appreciated. Uh, the Democratic Party. Uh, I mean, is there a Democratic Party? I mean, uh, you know, we're 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 supposed to be nonpartisan, but yeah, you, you have to have two parties to be partisan. I don't even <laughs> see a Democratic Party there. Um, uh, Ray Lutz, and then Justin, and then St Susan Pichon, and then we'll be done. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Harvey. I just wanted to try to respond to what Connie was asking. Uh, I think it's a pretty good question. Uh, can, are are we going to be uh, able to, you know, get these elections under control so that they're so that finally people are starting to trust them? Um, I do think that we're on the right track for this. I'm working with a group from the Internet Engineering Task Force, and it's got some heavy hitters in it. Uh, people, you know, Microsoft and others that really want to, that they're going to be. They've got directives down from the executive branch saying you have to secure your software. You have to make it so that it can't be hacked in different ways. And we're going to be able to um, use that infrastructure to secure really tightly the data that comes out of these machines so that there isn't a question about, OK, well, is that the real data? Is that the stuff that that they um, produce by the election officials or is this some you know scam set of data? And, and there's one kind of maybe possibility here. We have a lot of trouble with what is true. Who says that? Who said that such and such a thing? And just knowing if somebody says it, you know, trying to, to track down these this misinformation that we have. This same sort of thing could possibly use for that because what it requires is that if you say something like this is a file, they know, okay, this is that person. You have to say, I'm that person. And then they, it gets secured that way. So you can always, even if, if it's false, then you can find out, you know, who said it and hold them to account. Um, so there's there's some hopeful things here. Uh, it's going to take time, though, of course. It's still we have we still have to do grassroots everything. And th these sort of things don't deal with the registration, you know, the ballots that could possibly be stuffed. You know, as I say, misinformation, maybe there's a way to get that under control. There's still a lot of loose ends. But <laughs> I'm hoping that this, that what we're doing is is going to make it such that 
there can't be challenges to the election because it's going to be so obvious. And there may be some like distributed network of different parties that are checking it all the time, pretty much everything. And so then there wouldn't be a way to say, well, that's that's not true because it's all being audited so much that you can't it can't happen. We've got to get there. Anyway, that's that's my view. Thanks a lot. Well, hopefully we'll survive 22 with some kind of democracy in place and um, be able to present this definitive Bible of election protection by 24, uh, combined with a second one on grassroots campaigning uh, that will maybe approve. Uh, and I will personally uh, commit right now to editing both those books. So let, let's let's get it done. Uh, Justin and then um, Susan. And then Eric and I think we'll finish. We're at seven twenty-four Eastern time. Justin, hey, jo hey, hey. This is chiming in from San Francisco. So, here's what's been going on lately. I heard that Elon Musk is trying to buy Twitter. That's that's causing a lot of misinformation and hate. And you're seeing some election deniers that are still on the ballot, even if election deniers to win their election. What's going to be next moving forward? Do you think these guys will be barred because they? These guys should not be in office either way. Well, I got to tell you, you know, the Democratic Party put $34 million into the campaigns of election deniers so that they would win their primaries on the presumption they'd be easier to beat by mainstream Democrats. 34 or 43, I may have been dyslexic on this one. It's 34 or 43 million dollars. Can you imagine? How many progressive candidates could have been elected with $34 million invested in grassroots campaigns? When we asked Ray McClendon how much money it would take to do a legitimate grassroots turnout campaign in Georgia, he said 1.7 million, which is 1 20th of the amount of money that the Democratic Party put in to supporting the campaigns of election deniers. And we gotta remember that they put in money to Trump's campaign in 2016 on the presumption that he'd be easier to beat. I mean, it's a, it's a staggering reality, beyond infuriating and something we need to deal with. And your question about having election deniers, let's just remember one thing. These people are not merely denying the outcome of the 2020 election. They're denying democracy, period. Uh, the, the, the Nazi party was very clear that it hated democracy. And once it used democracy to get in power, it got rid of democracy. You ask Steve Bannon what he really thinks about democracy. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, the, the Trump kids and uh, Michael Flynn, for God's sakes, or Roger Stone. These people aren't, it's not stop to steal, it's stop voting, period. And end of story. And, and Saturday Night Live had a very cute line about Carrie Lake, the, um, the the fascist candidate for governor in Arizona. And she's basically they had they had her saying, "I guarantee you, uh, uh, you won't have to worry. If I'm elected, you won't have to worry about voting again." So you know that's the reality. Uh, Susan Pinchon, go ahead, please. And thank you for that, Susan. Hi, Harvey. Thanks. Um, yeah, I just, I'll just quick, I wasn't going to speak, but since Wendy <laughs> mentioned me, I'll, um, Florida is a mess, as you all know. Um, and I am 100% with John Brakey and Ray Lutz. I, I actually work for Audit USA. I also run Florida Fair Elections Coalition. Um, we just did a big paper that um, is coming out tomorrow on overvotes in Florida. There are, in 2018, in the last governor's race, there were over 20,000 overvotes, which is a which is double voting, which is always an accident. So those are lost votes, and so we have sort of a scathing paper, very academic but scathing paper on the failures of Florida Department of State to address that issue. It's been going on. We first reported it 14 years ago, but as far as ballot images go, right on. I'm a plaintiff in a lawsuit that's sponsored by Audit USA um, to try to make Florida counties preserve their ballot images. About half the counties are preserving and the other half are not, including the largest counties in the state. So we have a long ways to go 
towards true transparency, but we have a great team doing it. So, and thank you, Harvey, for everything that you do. Thanks, thanks everybody. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. It's an honor to be all with all 48 of you still with us. Mind boggling after two and a half hours. If I tried to keep my students for two and a half hours, <laughs> they'd laugh me out of the room. Uh, Jeffrey, yeah, you get the last word. One, one statement, please, and then we're done. Jeffrey? Uh, are you muted? Go ahead, Jeffrey, really quick. You can, can you hear me? Yes, real quickly, please. <laughs> The only the only Trump the only Trump that's not that's not actually a bad person is Mary, Mary Trump. In, in fact, she's probably the only only member of the Trump family that that I would actually consider voting voting for voting for office. If you know what I mean. Well, she's not. Is that they? She that, believes in democracy, and I know that. It's in, yes, she does. She appears to, and she um, she is Donald's niece. Apparently, uh, I do want to point out one one last thing. Thank you for that, Jeffrey. There is one group, one um, um, a demographic designation in this country that is not uh, known for mass shootings. In fact, less than 10% of the mass shootings have been conducted by this group. You know who it is? Women. More than 90% of the mass shootings are done by men. Uh, guys, uh, we got to deal with that. So welcome, Matriarchy. It's been it's 7.30 Eastern time. Thank you, Steve Caruso. You've been a total hero on this. Um, we are going to sign off now. We will not meet next week. We will meet in two weeks after the election. And viva Lula. Thank God Bolsonaro was defeated. I mean, it is a, a, as big a, an electoral victory as the human race has ever had. And uh, let's hope he's prevented from overthrowing. Uh, we can actually, instead of throwing Steve Bannon in jail, maybe they just should deport him to, to Brazil and, and uh, uh, maybe join a tribe or something in, in the Amazon. Dan Wolf, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, John Brakey, uh, um, uh, Emily, um, uh, Ray, uh, uh, so many of you guys, great. And we'll see you in two weeks and we'll, hopefully we'll still have a democracy. So uh, let's all. Pray get out to vote. And thank you, John Rosenthal, uh, for joining us. If you're still with us, and David Hogg, your work has been spectacular. John Steiner, good to see you. Uh, Alyssa, uh, go blue.